Let's start with this uh, big number that we are keeping an eye on right now. We're keeping an eye on this one as world leaders gather in Scotland to tackle climate change. So 125,000 is what you see there. Our previous decade here on Earth is estimated to be the hottest in 125,000 years. CO2 levels are potentially their highest in a million years. Wow, those incredible numbers and the growing urgency around climate change is why we are kicking off some very special coverage this month. We are digging into the climate crisis and its effects and a very <laughs> familiar face joins us now on all of this World News Tonight anchor David Muir is in Glasgow for that 2021 United Nations Climate Change Conference. It's also known as COP26. It's now in full swing. Delegates from around 200 countries are gathering there to make collective plans to cut emissions and to slow the rate of climate change. David, thank you for being on the program. And we're expecting tens of thousands of protesters, climate change activists to be there to fill the streets of Glasgow. Give us a sense of what it's like there on the ground right now. Yeah, absolutely. Great to be with you, by the way, Amy, TJ, Dr. Jen. You know, protesters, demonstrators, as you mentioned, Amy, are expected. And, you know, the billboards as you drive into town here in Glasgow, they already show essentially the message that protesters uh, want you to hear, which is the world is watching you. Those messages on the billboards directly aimed at world leaders, uh, they want action. I should note that China's President Xi and Russia's Vladimir Putin are not here. And President Biden calling that disappointing, saying that basically didn't show up with any commitments, uh, but a lot of focus here on the wealthiest nations, concrete benchmarks. Will there be anything more than what they promised in recent days at the G20? Uh, and I know you like the big number on uh, GMA3, so I've got a number for you uh, here. Uh, the world has warmed more in the last 29 years than in the previous 110 years. I think that's astounding. This is accelerating, it's worrisome, uh, and it really puts in stark focus uh, what leaders are here trying to accomplish. Man, David, as soon as I heard you mention that number earlier this morning, I actually tweeted that out because it's incredible to hear, but watching your piece this morning on uh, Good Morning America, your, uh, your time in Madagascar and what's happening there, I wanna show folks a quick clip uh, of this place, that's a, this island nation that's experiencing this extreme, extreme drought. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you about it on the other side. So let's look. We find a village where we've been told mothers have now brought their children for help. The baby boy dangling from the scale where the children are weighed. Were you worried about your little boy? Yeah, she was worried because this child is uh, malnourished. Measuring their arms with small pieces of color-coded tape. That's what the yellow tells you. The yellow tells you that this child is suffering from moderate malnutrition, acute malnutrition. David, this is a new admission. This child is the first time today. They are checking if any edema, and they're going to press three seconds on both feet. They are looking for swelling in the tissue, another sign of malnutrition, and they find it. We witness the urgency, the cries, the boy being weighed in a red bucket, the quiet little girl waiting, and the baby, they write her weight on her arm. This little girl, Angelica, who is four, they wrap the tape around her tiny arm, the small window revealing the red. Yeah, once again, a severely monitor's job. Showing her stomach to the aid workers. She is given fluids for dehydration and an antibiotic, unsure of its taste. What are we witnessing right now as far as climate? It's something really new. It's a change in the, in, in the landscape. Having sandstorm in this kind of landscape, it's not something usual. And having the effects of sandstorm shows that uh, nature is changing, the environment is changing, and the climate change is affecting this, uh, this, uh, this area more than, than the rest of the Madagascar. It's building up it's year after year that the, the rains are less and that people have less and less food to eat. Expound, expound a little bit more. We, it's one thing for us to see it and feel how we feel and get emotionally have to watching that, but being there on the ground. Yeah, you know, it's hard to put into words what we witnessed, TJ. You know, and I always think when we cover these stories, hunger and famine around the world, it's important to point out uh, that not only is there something you can do, and we put it at our homepage, abcnews.com, if you want to help out the World Food Program, abcnews.com, and, we, and we've listed the steps uh, that you can take. But it's also so important to point out that in this famine, you know, usually when, I, when I've gone to these scenes, it's war, conflict, 
terror that drives the famine. Sometimes they try to control the food because that's where the power is, how they control the economy through any kind of food aid that might arrive. That's not the case here. This is entirely climate driven. They live off the land there, you know, and, and the, the World Carbon Project has actually tracked this. Think about this. The people of Madagascar actually contribute to global carbon emissions at this level, 0.01%. That's all they contribute to carbon emissions uh, globally and look at the price they're paying there on the ground. So it's a real wake up call for the world. And I think as these leaders meet here in Glasgow from some of the wealthiest nations in the world, one of the true debates here is what do developed nations do to help some of these smaller countries that have contributed so little uh, to carbon emissions and yet they are truly paying the price like these children we, we've seen here today. David, I mean, just incredible, powerful reporting that will hopefully be a part of the change that's so needed. David Muir there in Glasgow. Thank you so much, David. We appreciate you. Thank you, Amy. Thank and, you. And as David mentioned, you know, you look at the faces of those children and so many of us want to help. We have a way to do it. Please, as David said, go to our homepage at abcnews.com. And of course, David's going to have a lot more on a special edition of World News Tonight this evening, live from Glasgow, as well as on Nightline. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.